Hey, how are you guys all doing? Welcome back to another bubble episode. From the very, very, very beginning of my channel, I've always talked about fursuit cleaning. All the little tips and tricks that I know to keep your wearable carpet stain free and smelling fresh. Well, today I am breaking all the rules. I've always wanted to know things like what sort of stuff will stain fur the worst or which will make it smell absolutely putrid or which ones look scary but are actually really easy to clean off. Rather than wait for a horrible fur sitting accident, I turn to... Science! My patrons and I brainstormed together and we came up with 27 different things to test on fur, ranging from food, drinks, condiments, cleaning products, and more. The goal was to soak, set, and then attempt to clean each substance against faux fur, which is the fake plastic-based fur that fursuits are most commonly made out of. Now, who will be my victim? No, 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 god no. I have offcuts. A long white shag fur, a short, dense, slightly off-white seal or teddy fur, and a medium-length dark grey fur. This way we can see how everything varies against different shades and fur types. So, let's take a look at our lineup of substances. Hello, voiceover Pakari here. Alright, so first up we have some lovely ketchup. A lot of you guys on Twitter were <laughs> terrified of that one. Then some mustard, but not just any mustard, a mild American mustard, because apparently Australian mustard isn't a thing, I guess. And mayonnaise, cannot forget the most best instrument, mayonnaise. Chocolate sauce, amazing for ice cream, not so amazing for fur with how sticky and gross it is, so that one's going to be pretty interesting. Good old Coles barbecue sauce, an absolute favourite in this household. White vinegar, I know a lot of people like to use this to whiten up the whites on their fursuits, so I really wanted to test this one. A nondescript cola-like soft drink, please don't sue me. Beer, please don't judge my beer choice, I just got whatever was on special. Vodka, and a very cheap vodka, so don't worry, nothing of value was lost. Red wine, and I went with a cab salve because that just seems to be the most common choice around here. Lemongrass essential oils. I had a really hard time choosing what fragrance to go with for essential oils, but I said on lemongrass because lemon seems to be a pretty common one in most fursuit sprays. But I also got a bottle of eucalyptus essential oil because this is the one that everyone says never put in a fursuit spray because it dissolves your fur or something. So I guess we will find out if that's true. Next, we have some wet cat food, mainly just because I wanted to see Cautious Colpio's horror. I also got some foundation. So for those not very makeup savvy like myself, uh, this is basically like the base color coat that you put on your face kind of thing. It's very brown, it's very muddy and it stains a lot. So good to test. A couple of lipsticks. So we got the two here, which is a matte lipstick, which means it's just not shiny and a long lasting long wear lipstick. So that one's going to be interesting. And because this is me, I found a blue one. It was really cheap. I don't know what kind it is. It's just blue. Yay. And then we have some toothpaste. Good protection against cavities, but probably not as effective on fur. One of the most debated things in fursuit cleaning, Febreze. Some people swear by it, some say it leaves a sticky residue and ruins their suits, so I'm really curious about this one. Some shower body wash, pretty good for cleaning your body, but probably not so good for cleaning your fursuit, but I guess we'll find out. Some shampoo and conditioner. I do get a lot of questions from people asking whether or not you can use this on your fursuit, and I wouldn't recommend it, but I guess we're going to find out once and for all what it actually does. Some coffee. This is my personal coffee that I have every single morning. Very good. Highly recommend. Moving on to some of the more harsh chemicals now, starting with a bleach-based cleaner. Uh, this one's called Domestos here in Australia, but I'm just going to call it bleach because that's basically what it is. Just know that there is more than just bleach in there. Now here we have some really interesting ones. So on the left there is acetone. In the middle is a hospital grade cleaner. And on the end is ethanol. Acetone is commonly used as a nail polish remover, so it is a very harsh chemical. The hospital cleaner came in a powdered form, but if you add a little bit of water to it, it's what they use to sterilize science labs. And ethanol is another cleaner or like sterilizer type thing. Like you'll usually find that one in medical wipes, uh, hand sanitizers, and even some antiseptics. So if that one goes well, we could have another contender for a fursuit cleaner here. And of course, isopropyl alcohol, which I don't have because I ordered it online and it didn't arrive by the time I was filming this bit, but it did arrive later. This is what goes into fursuit sprays. It's usually half water, half isopropyl alcohol, and then like a few drops of essential oils. So by rights, and hopefully this shouldn't affect the fur at all. And of course, I can't forget every fursuit's favorite snack, some sliced beetroot, but you gotta watch out or it stains. What, you guys don't eat sliced beetroot? 
And there are three more non-soaking tests I wanted to do as well. So we have grass stains, the washing machine on its highest temperature settings, and just leaving the fur outside to be weathered. Before we go any further though, please do not try this at home, especially with some of the more harsher chemicals. I was being overseen by my friend Dr Dingo who actually works in the science industry. They provided me with proper safety equipment and instruction on how to conduct this experiment as safely as possible. Plus, I don't think my bathroom is ever going to quite smell the same again, so for your own sake, please leave this to me. I started off by cutting the fur into small swatches, and by the way, never cut fur like this if you plan to actually make something out of it. You'll end up with some really rough choppy edges and fur everywhere, but it didn't matter for this, so whee! Then I labelled all my containers and began to drown the fur. This was actually so much fun. I especially enjoyed getting to empty an entire tube of toothpaste. The strangest one was definitely the lemongrass essential oils. The thick oil soaked into the fur created this really weird slime-like texture, complete with the ability to poke little craters in it. And note for the coffee one, I actually brewed my usual morning coffee with milk, so I was a little terrified on how that one was gonna smell after being left out. Also, I realized all too late that I didn't have a can opener for the beetroot, so I consulted YouTube for advice, and apparently you can open cans by rubbing a spoon back and forth along the seam, so I got my trusty spoon and worked at it. And worked at it. And worked at it. Yeah, I think this video lied to me, so I created my own trick. I call it Knifey Beats Spoonie. Allow me to reiterate the don't try this at home. I headed to a better ventilated room for the harsh chemicals and to my disappointment there are no immediate reactions, like even the bleach looked fine, but hopefully time will change that. So here they are, all sitting together, sealed up and brewing some very nasty stains. Such a strange sight to behold. So while they did their thing, I did my non-soak tests, starting with collecting some grass stains. Literally just headed out to my backyard and went to town on those fur samples. Here's what I was left with. While well, you can't really see the grass stain on the grey fur, you could definitely feel it. It was all crumbly and crusty and gross. Back outside, I also set up my weathering test, weighing the samples down so that they wouldn't fly away. Video continuity error, but this was actually the first thing I did, so these ended up being outside for almost an entire month. So stay tuned to the end to see if they survived prolonged exposure to Melbourne's four seasons in one day weather. Now it's time for the hot wash test. I set my washing machine to 90 degrees, or 194 in freedom units, and let them go. As fursuit fur is made from a plastic, high temperatures will permanently damage it. That's why you always wash your suit with cold water and never, ever, ever put it in the dryer. So once my samples were out and air dry, they didn't look like the same pieces that went in. The fur was now going in every direction, no matter how much I brushed it, just stuck in this perpetual fuzzy state. The grey fur had shrunk a tiny bit, and the fur definitely wasn't as soft anymore. The short white fur was still soft, but it had shrunk by about 25% but the long white fur got it the worst. It feels like almost half the fur has fallen out. You can even see the backing through it quite easily and the backing has completely yellowed. I had no idea that heat could cause yellowing like this, so yay, we learned something. After three solid days of leaving everything to soak, it was time to fish them all out.
ones that changed colour the most dramatically were the ones you'd pretty much expected, like beer, wine, cola. The sauces were the absolute worst because I had to squeeze the big gloops out of the fur, otherwise it would never dry. I also discovered that mustard is clearly made of magic because not only did the first piece come out perfectly, like, look how satisfying that is, but the second piece... I had to stop for a bit because I was so confused as to what just happened. Like, how does it just fall out like that after being left for three days? I was excited to see what would happen to the last piece of fur, but, uh, ugh, yeah, that, yeah, that's thoroughly in there. Ugh. I didn't film the emptying part for the hard chemicals, but you'll see them later. Here's how my garden of gross looked right after I finished rescuing all the fur samples. And you'd think it would smell pretty terrible, but literally all I could smell was the beetroot. Maybe my nose was just fried by that point, but it could be worse. So, let the drying begin. Two weeks later. Yep, I left these out for 16 days, and whoa boy, did some of them get really nasty. I'm gonna go through them one by one and give them a rating out of five for appearance, smell, and texture, and then do the same again after I've tried to clean them. With five stars meaning it's the same as it originally was or was even improved, and zero stars meaning it has been completely ruined. Starting with the shampoo. It was really oily, but it smelled really nice and the colors were fine. The conditioner had dried the fur into this almost cardboard-like texture. It was really strange, and the conditioner spell made it smell like a hair salon. But at least the colors are fine. Can't say the same for the body wash though, that was still stained very blue and had this like grease-like texture. For the lipstick, pretty much nothing had changed, like it smelled like lipstick, it looked like lipstick, and doing a transfer test, only the matte lipstick actually came off. The foundation looked and smelled like dried mud and still came off onto my glove. It was very unpleasant. The coke was absolutely ridiculous, like it was completely stuck to the container, but when I finally did get it out, it had this taffy-like texture like it just felt like sugar which makes sense because you know it's coke but the fur had completely solidified it had that weird caramelly toffee taffy like texture it also didn't smell too great it sort of smelled like coke mixed with dirt the wine while the color was kind of interesting the texture was really nasty it felt exactly like kitchen grease it was as if i'd gotten a piece of fur and just wiped my oven down with it not not good at all it didn't even smell like wine such a ripoff the lemon oil hadn't changed at all from when I first emptied it. It was still really nasty and slimy and gross, but hey, smelled nice, I guess. The fur breeze at first looked like it was pretty okay, like it smelled really nice, the colors were fine, but as you sort of work the fur in a bit more, you can really feel this strange sticky residue on it, so I think that's what people are talking about when they say it leaves a residue. Ugh, the ketchup was disgusting. Completely solid. I had a really hard time getting it out of the container. It was almost like it'd be coated in a resin. And when I finally did get it out, it did not sound right at all. Yeah, I basically had stinky chunks of plastic. I really don't know how we're gonna come back from this one. The vodka, to my surprise, was completely unchanged. The fur was really nice and fluffy. It didn't even smell like vodka. Like, it, it's as if it was a control test. I was really taken aback. The beer changed the fur into this really strange, crispy texture. It was almost like it was styrofoam. I also really liked the tint that it gave the short fur. It's just a nice, like, dingo brown color. And smell-wise, it wasn't actually too bad either. Like, from a distance, you couldn't smell a thing, but in your face, definitely smells of beer. The vinegar was also relatively unchanged. You could smell a little bit of vinegar in it, but texture-wise, it was fine, and the color was fine too. Eucalyptus oil was the same story as lemon oil, still really oily, definitely smelled of the oil, and no color changes. Bit sad we didn't get to see that eating away at the fur eucalyptus oil, but maybe that'll change when we wash it out. Okay, I actually love the colors that came out of the beetroot. Like, it's such a nice, deep, silky, pinky red kind of color. It looks even better in person than it does on the camera, so I'm kind of secretly hoping this doesn't clean, so then maybe I could turn more fur into this color. Thankfully no smell either, but it did have a fair bit of an oily texture to it. Oh man, the cat food. The cat food was so bad, I have so many regrets. It absolutely stunk. It looks horrendous. And texture-wise, it felt like styrofoam, but on the sides where it was a bit more congealed, it was solid and sharp. But it still wasn't as bad as the chocolate, which actually got moldy. Blech. It was extremely sticky. It definitely smelled of mold, and the fur itself had this jerky texture, and not even good jerky, like a really, really bad jerky that's not chewy but not crispy either. You know, that really bad median. 
The toothpaste was weird. The way it had solidified, it was like a candy, like very taffy-like, but just where the toothpaste was. It was very difficult to pull out of the fur, and when I did get bits out, it kept sticking to my gloves, and it was sticky and gross. But it smelled minty fresh. Just like the other sauces, the barbecue sauce also had that taffy-like texture, but it kept its shape a lot better. I could bend and mold and play with it a little bit. And also it smelled pretty bad of barbecue sauce, but that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on who you ask. The mayonnaise was really, really gross. It was very, very oily and slimy, and where the mayo had congealed, it had the exact same texture as animal fat, but thankfully had no smell. The coffee had changed the colors of all three pretty dramatically, like you can't see the gray one too much, but in person you could definitely see it was more of a gray brown now. Smell wise, it smelled like a really bad burnt coffee. And the texture was really strange. It was soft, but there were little congealed bits that were actually very spiky and sharp. The mustard had solidified the samples pretty well and given them that strange golden brown, but the seal fur had actually been completely sealed in by the mustard, so it almost felt like a squishy, but not a good squishy, but had that same sort of slow rise effect. And oh boy, did it stink. Now we get into the more chemically ones, starting with ethanol. It looked and smelled fine, but the fur was actually falling out. I could pull it out pretty easily, so that is not a good sign. The hospital cleaner made the fur go a little bit crusty, but not too bad. You might actually be able to brush that out. The acetone, however, was a pretty crazy one. So like, it looks fine and it smells fine, but then you pick them up and it's like picking up a french fry. Fur is not supposed to do that. The fur was all melted and stuck together and they were just completely solid. Isopropyl alcohol, as expected, was fine. Smelled fine, looked fine. It was a bit stiff, but I think that's just from sitting out. So that would normally brush out and be fluffy again. And the bleach. Everything looks fine till you look in the middle. The gray is not so gray anymore. It also wasn't completely dry either. Like while they stuck together, it was still very oily and sudsy. The white fur especially wasn't entirely sure what to do with itself. It was solidified in all kinds of directions. Alrighty, time to spot clean. Note, I didn't spot clean the chemical ones because mixing unknown chemicals is generally not a good idea and there wasn't really anything to clean off them anyway, but everything else got the treatment. This is the one I use specifically. It's my usual go-to spot cleaner and I swear it's the world's only clickbaity product that actually does what it says it does. Over the years of fur sitting, I have used a whole range of different brands of carpet spot cleaner, but this one seems to be working the best in my experience. Being such solid stains, it had a really difficult time doing anything significant. It could barely even get into some of them with how sealed they'd become. It kind of just sat on the top and did nothing. So here's how they looked after spot cleaning them all once. It was hard to tell what the spot cleaner had achieved and what was actually just the damp paper towel. I think most you'd be able to get looking pretty good with a couple of repeats, but unfortunately I didn't have time to test that. Their final test would be the washing machine. I couldn't just throw them all in because they'd all contaminate each other and I'd never know which sample was what, but doing each set individually would be a colossal waste of water. So instead, I got each container, filled it with water, sprinkled it with my laundry powder, put the lid back on, and shook the absolute daylights out of it. Then I rinsed them and wrung them out the best I could. Nothing really significant happened here except the toothpaste came out in one giant minty taffy chunk and the wine turned the water black. I was expecting maybe like a burgundy color, but not black. A few hours and a lot of mess later, I set all the samples out and left them to dry. Two days later. So here we are, the final results. They've all been given a brush. Well, the ones that I could give a brush. So let's see how they look now. First, let's take a look at the control samples. So absolutely nothing has been done to these. Freshly cut off the rolls, super soft and fluffy. Colors are absolutely perfect. So here's how our weathering samples look. After nearly an entire month of being left outside, they're actually pretty okay. Like a little bit of dirt and stuff has blown into them, but a quick wash would fix those up, no problem. It does look like the dark fur has been sun bleached a little bit though. It's hard to see on camera, but in person you can see a slight difference. Wine. The texture was actually fine and so was the smell, but it is definitely stained. Toothpaste. Colors absolutely fine. However, the teddy fur still had a little bit of toothpaste chunkiness to it, but all around it smelled nice and minty fresh. Shampoo. There's a tiny little bit of an oily residue on it, but not too bad. And it smelled exactly like the shampoo, so quite pleasant. Febreze. That smelled really nice. Like it definitely had that typical Febreze smell to it. The texture was a teeny itty bitty bit sticky. Like it still has that slight residue to it, but color was all fine. Lipstick. 
the texture was a little bit crusty and as you can see there's little blotchy colors all over the place like maybe some spot cleaning might get that out and it definitely smells like lipstick now this one was a surprise this is the cola I mean, look at that recovery like i did not expect this one to go so well the texture was absolutely fine there was no smell and really only the teddy fur went off color foundation yeah, it was alright. Like, the smell still smelled a little bit like foundation, and it did leave a slight oily texture on it, and it is definitely stained. Vodka. Yep, no smell, perfectly fluffy, no color change. I, it's, it's great. <laughs> mayonnaise. Still has that slight mayonnaise smell to it, and a little bit of an oiliness to it, but surprisingly, the colors are fine. Vinegar. Similar to the vodka, all good all round. No problems with texture, smell, or color. Mustard. It wasn't looking too bad until we got to the seal fur. The texture is absolutely ruined, and all three of them smell just like a wet dog. Not to mention the backings have also been completely ruined, but the mustard definitely gets my worst smell award. Chocolate. Still very sticky and very rigid like taffy, and if you really put your face up to it, it also smells like a dog. As you can see, the colors are absolutely ruined, and no matter how hard I try, I cannot brush this. I'm not entirely sure how you would come back from this one, maybe if you soaked it for a while, but either way, I would definitely never want to get chocolate sauce on my suit. Body wash. There's a little bit of a residue left on there, but it's not too bad. It smells exactly like a nice warm bath, so that's alright, and the colors looked fine. Isopropyl alcohol. Yep. All clear around the board. Texture was fine, color was fine, and has no smell. There's a very clear reason why we use this in our first sprays. Cat food. It's still got a little bit of a crustiness to it, and it smells exactly like an old musty pet shop. The color was fine except the seal fur, which really wanted to keep some cat food as a souvenir. Beetroot was another surprising one. They actually don't look too bad, like the backings are stained, but otherwise texture, smell, appearance, all good. Ketchup was an absolute nightmare, still extremely stiff and clumped together. I mean, the long fur wasn't too bad, but the other two were completely ruined and they all smelled like tomato and laundry powder, which I guess makes sense. Another one that I really can't brush in the slightest, so I would stay way, way, way away from this one in fursuit. Bleach. The grey fur has been significantly lightened and the seal fur is now white white instead of off white. But before you get your hopes up, the backings have been completely ravaged. They went from very rigid to very soft and cotton-like, so not very good for holding in fur. And they also still smelled of the bleach cleaner, so that is not good to be sniffing all the time. Lemongrass essential oils. The texture actually ended up being fine and so did the colors. It smells exactly like the lemongrass, so I actually think this one's been improved. Conditioner. The fur was a little bit more coarse, like not too bad, and it smells exactly like a hair straightener on freshly washed hair. So it could be better, it could be worse, and nothing wrong with the colors. Barbecue sauce. I feel like the spot cleaner actually made a difference on this one because it's still really soft in the center and extremely clumpy and unpleasant around it. It also has a slight wet dog smell, and yeah, just very badly stained. Coffee. Smells like a really cheap, nasty, burnt coffee. And the textures was actually fine. Just, yeah, very badly stained. If you look on the backs, it looks like it's been aged by like 50 years. It's kind of cool, actually. The beer actually scrubbed up pretty well. Only a slight beer smell if you really shove your face in it, and only the seal fur got discolored. No problem for texture either. Still nice and fluffy. Eucalyptus oil. No discoloration, no change to the texture, smelled like a cough drop, but the seal and the grey fur buckled really strangely. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's a pretty good argument for why you shouldn't use eucalyptus oil. Who knows how many other furs react the same way. Ethanol. The fur definitely wasn't as fluffy as it could have been, but it wasn't too bad. No discoloration, but it did smell a little bit chemically. Acetone. The seal survived okay, but the other two were virtually destroyed. Fur fused together and still smelled of acetone a bit. Very stiff and rigid and melty and crusty and you can't come back from this. Hospital cleaner. Texture was totally fine, no loss of color, but it does smell exactly like a hospital, so that was kind of weird. As for the grass stains, totally gone. The texture of the long white fur went a bit frizzy, but that was mainly from the friction of being repeatedly rubbed on the ground. And that is all the results. So what are some things that we've learned? Firstly, leaving stains in for multiple weeks is definitely not a good idea. The sooner you get to a stain, the easier it's going to come off. 
Isopropyl alcohol and essential oils are used in fursuit sprays for very good reason. Even after being exposed to them for a long time, the fur is completely fine. With the exception of eucalyptus, of course. Not all drink stains are the end of the world. As we learn from ones such as the cola and the beer, a full revival is entirely possible. The dense seal and teddy type fur loves to hold on to stains for dear life. I would not recommend this type of fur for fursuits that are going to be extremely active or for fursuit parts that are going to be on the ground. Mustard is magic and ketchup is the devil. Those are the main things that I took away from this experiment, but hey, let me know in the comments what sort of things you learned. However, please take my results with a grain of salt. Unless you have this exact same fur, your results will most likely differ to mine in some way. There are many, 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 many different kinds of fur out there and I can never test them all. Just because vodka didn't do anything to my samples, doesn't mean you should assume it's safe to clean your suit with. Not to mention there are so many different brands of cleaners and substances out there that can vary it too. Always patch test before trying something new on your suit, either on an area of your suit that doesn't get seen much or on some scraps of the exact same fur. And with that, this experiment is officially concluded. This was my first time doing an experiment to like this sort of extent, so I hope it wasn't too confusing. I certainly found it interesting, so I hope you guys did too and maybe even discovered something new. But hey, let me know in the comments below which test was the most surprising to you. I know for me, it was definitely the vodka. Like, I was, I was almost certain it was going to at least leave some kind of smell, but it was fine. So <laughs> that was really unexpected. I might have to do another video where I use vodka to clean for... Hmm. A patron shout out to Nathan Schrepfer. I'm so sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce your last name. I am terribly sorry, but thank you so much for supporting this channel. You have been amazing and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for helping to bring this video to these guys. But of course, thank you so much for watching. I would not be here without that. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.